This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk through this 2022 Flagstaff Shamrock model number 235S. Okay. So this is just a basic how-to video. This is I'm not going to get into raising and lowering the bunks or or, or anything like that. No, nope. I'm just going to show you some of the features and how they work. All right. So we'll start on the outside here. Um, obviously you have a power awning with an LED strip. Uh, this vent right here is the range hood vent. So keep in mind that there's, a, there's a, a tab, a latch on each side. I don't know if you can see it very well. But if you want to vent to the outside, you gotta, you gotta reach up and snap those tabs open so the whole baffle flaps freely. So it vents to the outside. Otherwise, you know, they, the air you're attempting to exhaust is just gonna sort of like bounce back into the trailer. So. Um, you want it to flat freely. When you're traveling or in storage, keep it shut, okay? Um, this also has uh, hookups for a, a TV here outside. You got a bracket, you got signal out, and power. Um, now this rail right here holds your griddle, and it also has a, um, a small utility table. This is your griddle just sitting right here. Uh, but that will hang on the outside here. And then there's a a uh, uh, LP supply line with quick connects on it so you'll connect it to the grill and then the other one the other end will be connected right there to that quick connect so that's how you that's how you hook up the uh, griddle to the to the LP, LP system of the trailer okay um, now the most common way to get water to the trailer is through the city water hookup this is if you happen to be camping on a campground or a campsite that doesn't have plumbing you can um, you can pre-fill this tank right here, and then use the onboard pump to pump the water. Um, of course, if you, if you have city water, you don't have to worry about this at all. But you can, if you're going rustic camping, you can still have water, and all the plumbing will work just by filling that tank ahead of time. This is just a sprayer. It comes with a, a coiled uh, coiled sprayer with a nozzle. All right, matter of fact, there it is right there. Okay, so you have also have a dorm refrigerator, it works on 110 AC, so as soon as you uh, plug in the trailer, it'll turn on. This is your cooktop, and this also has a quick connect to the LP system. There's the male fitting right there, and if you look underneath here, there's the female part of it right there. So, you can hook it up there. Now, now this, interestingly enough, this, this hole, I don't know if you can, you can actually see through it that far, but trust me when I tell you that coming out of the frame is a shaft with a pin through it, okay? Um, they give you this crank here. Let me pull it out of here. It's this one right here with this cylinder with a slot cut in it. Well, that will accept the, the pin, or the, excuse me, the shaft with a pin through it that you you would access through here, and you can actually crank your slide room in and out manually if you had to in an emergency. So if you get into some kind of a difficulty, whether there's a, it fails or maybe you lose power, whatever happens, you can always crank it in and out in an emergency. Okay, also, I look at the other cranks in here, hold on. What else we have? This one here, this is for the power tongue jack. See, so it's got a smaller hex on it. I don't think you can see that very well, but if the power tongue jack was to fail, whoops, if the power tongue jack was to fail, you could pull this plug out of the top, put the crank on there, and crank it manually also to get yourself out of trouble. That way you can always get it hitched and unhitched, no matter what. Okay, and then they also give you a, just a regular three quarter inch crank comes with it. Also, this metal table here, I don't know how well you can see it. This, this part does not have a light. So there's a, it's just a metal utility table that hangs on the rail next to the griddle. Okay? So um, you have a power tongue jack. You have two 20-pound uh, LP tanks with automatic changeover regulator. Uh, they left the, the uh, lid off the battery box to show that you get two batteries with it. They're two 12-volt um, deep cycle marine batteries. Uh, 
they're wired together as 12 volts, so it just doubles the storage capacity. So you, you, you still got a 12 volt setup, but it's just double the storage. Also, right here, if you can see this knob here, it's, that is the kill switch for the battery. So if you ever want to shut the batteries off, you can just turn that off. Let's say you put it in the storage or for whatever reason. Okay. Now, just so you know, here, let me get my flashlight out here, like I should have done already. Okay. This device right here is a power inverter. So this inverts power, it converts it or inverts it from from 12 volt DC to 110 AC. So inside the trailer there's going to be a just one plug that is inverted. So you could you if you if you have no no AC power hooked up, you can still use the 12 volts out of your battery. This device will turn it into 110 AC, send it to your one receptacle and you could plug in a you know, a hair dryer or a coffee pot or whatever you wanted to run, uh, you can do it using the inverter. Also, there's the solar panels on this one, which I'll show you. And uh, the solar panel will also charge your battery, too. We'll, we'll get into that when we get inside, okay? So that's your power inverter. Your uh, water heater and tank. Um, so the thing to know, is the switches to operate are inside. Works on uh, regular AC power, AC electricity, and or uh, LP gas. So it has a burner here, and then it has a heating element behind this cover here. Right now, this drain plug is out. It takes this for, just so you know, it's an inch and a sixteenth six-point socket, so, and you also need like a, a three or a, a six-inch extension or so and a breaker for it of some sort. So. Keep in mind that you can't run this dry. So if you're, if you want to, you always have to make sure there's water in the tank before you turn on the electrical heating element or the gas, or else it'll damage it. So right now this is winterized, so the water heater's empty and it's bypassed. Okay. So keep that in mind. Um, this is just a, a sprayer, uh, like an outside shower they call it, but it's more like a, it's just a spray handset. Okay. You have a 30 foot, 30 amp power cord right here. These are your water hookups here. So your city water connection is right here. So that's the most common way to get water to the trailer. Put it on, the hose on there, turn it on. Now I showed you uh, on the other side where you fill your fresh water tank if you don't have plumbing on the campsite, okay? Um, now this is an antifreeze inlet. So if you're, when you're drawing antifreeze into the trailer to winterize it, you'll use this port here, okay? And then this one's a black tank flush. So after you dump your black tank, if you want to uh, uh, leave the valve open, that's important. It says right here, keep it, read the sticker here. It tells you to make sure you leave it open. You leave that valve open, you put the hose on here, you turn it on, it'll spray out your black tank. It'll clean off the, uh, it'll clean off the sensors really well so you get a good reading. So it's a good thing to do. If they have a working hose at the dump station, it's a good idea to do that all the time. Okay. This is just an adapter, and this is your, your dump hose, of course. Um, let me get around here. Um, so you can see on top of the tent there, there's a housing for a backup camera. So keep in mind that you can, uh, you can purchase a backup camera. It's already wired for it. You just install it right there, and uh, you put the screen in your tow vehicle and plug it into your cigarette lighter, and you're all set. Um, also, what we're looking up, keep in mind that the manufacturer states that every 90 days you should inspect the roof. So if somebody needs to go up there, uh, needs to look at all the sealant, make sure there's no cracking or separation. Make sure that there's no damage to any uh, roof attachments or roofing material by low branches or that sort of thing, road debris. So just give it a good inspection. Odds are you won't have to do anything, but if you... Uh, if you do see something, eventually, if you inspect it enough over enough years, you'll, you'll see an issue, but you take care of it immediately, and your trailer will stay bone dry inside like it should. Okay? Uh, of course, I, I didn't go over it, but you have, you have crank-type stabilizers. That's what the three-quarter inch crank is for in the front. All right. Like I said, I'm not going to go over the uh, bunks at all. The manufacturer makes an excellent video on how to set that up, and we're also going to show you when you pick up. This is just a basic how to use it while, you, while it's set up, okay? All right, so, starting from here, obviously this is your thermostat. 
it's uh, you always want to leave the fan on auto, and then you, it's pretty self-evident how the thing works. Now this we're inside a shop now, so we're not we're not getting any solar power. But first thing you do, or I'll do it while I'm standing here, is you want to set the battery. You don't have to do this once it's set. Okay, I'm just going to convert it to flooded, which it's supposed to be because that's the type of battery it is. So, you don't have to worry about that now, that's set. So right now it's telling us there's 13.2 volts coming from your battery or in your batteries. That's excellent. You don't pay attention to the A button because there's just, the two bat. although there are two batteries, I said they're wired together in one, so this, this considers it one battery. So you, the B button is what you use it. And you go through to, to uh, this is your, this, your, the sun. <laughs> that's a picture of the sun. That's the solar panel. Right, so right now it's telling us 0.0, .0 amps are being, are being converted from the sun into electricity at your solar panel and put into your battery. So you're not gaining anything because we're inside. We're outside in the sun, it'll change. You'll see it'll be 4.7 or, or depends on what position the sun is in. Um, if you're in the shade or in the sun, um, that sort of thing. Um, so that's that. If you push it again, it's telling us that we're 100% charged, which is excellent and amp hours so the amp hours will go up after your solar after you're outside obviously but so I'll just go through it again that tells you how what it, what we have 13.2 volts we're gaining nothing from the Sun right now you have a hundred percent charge and um, one uh, 612 amp hours so um, we're in good shape you also can do you have an AC boost you can read a bit about that more for example, with this with this charger right here, if you if you have a power outage or whatever, you can charge your or your phone, your phone needs to be charged. You can charge your phone right here using the solar panel, for example. Okay, <clears throat> it also has Bluetooth, so you can get an app for it. Uh, um, that's up to you. Okay. Um, so let's see. So the solar panel, or excuse me, the uh, control panel is right here. Uh, your battery is charged. Fresh water is empty, black is empty, gray is empty. Um, uh, your water heater on electric is right here. To light it on gas is right there. Remember what I told you about filling the tank before you do that? Your water pump. Uh, and you have tank heaters on your holding tank. So to, turn, to extend your camping season, you turn that on right like that. Um, you have your slide out and your power awning. Never leave the awning out unattended, of course. If you're not going to be at the campsite, roll it in all your lights here and then this thing right here this is the Wi-Fi Ranger the Wi-Fi Ranger is a, is, a, is a signal booster and router for a public Wi-Fi so it, you can't really see it but I'll just talk you through it there's a sticker right here that tells you that Tenton uh, that's a long ways away I think it says 7582 is uh, the name of your Wi-Fi Ranger so if you look at the Wi-Fi and all of, and your family's devices all your phones and tablets you'll find that and that's that's your Wi-Fi Ranger so you will put in a password uh, for each of those so it'll hook up to it automatically right then um, if you if you go to the bottom line here the control panel there's a there's an address where you can type it into a browser and it'll take you to the page for your Wi-Fi Ranger uh, this is the temporary password change me now looks like 7582 okay um, you'll set up your own password for that something everybody knows but basically, your, your phones are all going to hook to this automatically. But when you get to the campground, you'll go to this address, and you'll look at, and there'll be a list of everything that the Wi-Fi Ranger sees. You'll pick up the campground Wi-Fi in this instance, and they'll hook up to it, and you're all set. It really boosts your, your bandwidth really well. It, it gives you a better, a much better, uh, uh, it bas basically just improves, improves the quality of your Wi-Fi all the way around. It also has a built-in firewall. And um, so it can, it can turn your weak uh, public Wi-Fi into something that's stronger. Okay. The, the Wi-Fi Ranger is on the roof, just so you know. It's, it's an antenna type deal. Um, and there's one more thing that this will do. This, this, it's a paid function, but if you wanted to get cellular service through it, you can do that. You have to pay whoever you get your cellular from. You'd have to pay for an extra device, that sort of thing. But you can read about that if you choose to. Um, but most people just use the, the free public Wi-Fi version, okay? These also have um, apps for them, okay? Um, 
microwave works any other microwave. This is uh, your range hood. I told you about opening the uh, baffle on the uh, on the vent on the outside. There's the fan and the light. Okay. The range works like any other RV range. You go. Let me see here. We'll three three burners, uh, three knobs. This is a sparker. You turn it clockwise to spark. This is the oven knob right here. So I don't know if we're turned on here. Let's see. Probably not. Give it a second. I can hear gas. There we go. So no, it'll normally start the first spark, but we've had the tanks on and off. So um, that lights like that. Now to light the oven. The oven has a pilot light all the way at the back at the bottom. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the picture of the pilot light with the oven knob. Then you depress it and keep it depressed. Then you're going to start sparking by turning this clockwise till it lights down here. After it lights, you hold it for another 10 seconds or so. And then you can let go of it. You go to the operating temperature and it cycles as an oven does. When you shut it off, the flame goes out, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. Um, and always keep this down when you're traveling, this glass top, or it will tend to break if you drive around with it up like that. So, Okay, your keys are right here, two sets of keys. <clears throat> your refrigerator is just a 12-volt a DC refrigerator. So, one of the 12 volts. Now, I showed you your power inverter up front, right? The power inverter inverts power from 12-volt DC to 110 AC. Well, this is the power converter. It does just the opposite. It converts AC to DC power. So, let me get it open here. So, on this side, you have you have circuit breakers like you'd see at home, regular 110 AC, and they're all labeled, right? Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC on this side, and you can see you got 12 volt fuses, and they're all labeled. Okay. Now, this is also a battery tender. So, when you're plugged in, it'll sense how much energy your batteries need, and it'll keep them topped off. Uh, if they're charged, it'll just trickle a couple of amps up there. If they're low, it'll send 10 amps or whatever it needs to keep them charged. So when you're, when you're pulling your vehicle down the road, your tow vehicle's alternator charges the batteries, and when you're plugged in, this, this power converter charges the batteries. Okay. Now I was talking about the inverter a second ago, so let me walk over here. You only invert power as needed, so you don't just leave it running. Um, so you come over to here, you can see this button right here is the inverter. Uh, to turn it on, to start turning 12 volt DC into 110 AC, you're just going to go like that. Okay. This circuit, or this plug here is the one that's wired to the inverter. So you have to plug into that to get, to get, your, to get your inverted power. You cannot run the air conditioner. Oh, first of all, to shut this off, you hold it for maybe three or four seconds. And yeah, let me try that again. <laughs> hold it maybe five seconds. There it goes. And it'll shut off. Um, you cannot run an air conditioning on, an in, on, on the inverter. You can't run a microwave on the inverter. Only small, small appliances, okay? Um, <clears throat> now this device here is your carbon monoxide LP gas detector. It should always be green like it is. Um, it, it detects carbon monoxide or LP buildup. Um, if it goes off, you take everybody outside, leave the door open, shut the gas off at the front, figure out what's going on. All right. And if it beeps the same tone but very slowly, it's telling you that your batteries are low. So, <clears throat> so it also tells you low battery. So LP gas uh, is good. Test. Carbon monoxide test is good. Now the uh, low battery alarm coming up. back to green so there you have it okay so this is a height of bed of course you just pull up the cushion the back cushions off and you fold this thing out it turns into a bed you can also drop this table down by pushing this this yellow little button to the right and it'll unlatch it and it's got hinges on it you just drop the hinges right onto these cleats here and it turns into a bed. Always travel with this in the down position. Never travel with it in the up position because uh, it can bounce around or break something. So you always want it in the you always want it stowed when you're traveling. This is your this this is your uh, tire pressure and and temperature monitor. It still has to be set up. If you use it, you know, it's up to you, but basically this, this is the screen that will go out front in your tow vehicle. 
and it'll, it'll tell you what the temperature of the hubs are and how much pressure is in it. It also has an audible alarm if you want to set it that way. You can set it a bunch of different ways. So that's what that. Just so you know, the sensors are in the wheels, inside the tires actually, on the wheel, opposite the valve stem. So uh, keep in mind that if you're, if you're setting up and, you wanna, and you're having a hard time getting a reading, you remember to go across from the valve stem right on the, uh, on the wheel itself, inside the tire, okay? All right. Now, I'm, I didn't mention it, but this, there's a, a um, here, let me do that this way. Let me see where he's got the, the remotes at. There's one, anyway. Well, I didn't prep this. The remotes are in here for sure, so I'll just talk you through it. I'll make sure they're here when, as we go forward. So you have a space heater, which is a fireplace, and it turns on here. It has a remote. So you can basically set the, the fan speed. Um, it's a really good space heater. You can change the, the appearance of the flame. You can set the temperature. Also, um, um, like I said, there are different fan speeds, so it's a really good space heater. And the neat thing is that it, it works on AC power, so you have a limited supply of LP gas. So if you wanted to use this in the evening or in the, in the morning, whatever, to take the chill out of the trailer, it works really well for that. Um, your sound here, you can play CDs and DVDs right here. You uh, can stream off the USB. Um, you, it has Bluetooth, so you can hook up wirelessly from your phone or tablet, whatever you have. AM, FM radio. Two speaker zones, one is inside the trailer, two is outside the trailer. This HDMI is an in, so if you wanted to go into it with something like a, one of those game machines or something like that, you could go into the system through this HDMI if you needed to, or, or anything else you wanted to, to go into it with, okay? So it does a lot, and of course your TV it works like any other TV. You have storage behind it, which is kind of neat. Okay. I only have a, a little less than a half hour to get this done before it starts a new file, so I want to. I got to pick up the pace and make sure I get get there. Okay. This circuit is inverted, also that plug, just so you know. Uh, these are fan light combos that hang above your bunks, and these are thermostats for your for your uh, mattress warmers, not heaters, just warmers. Um, this plugs into the into the mattress on the side, and then the other plug plugs into the nearest nearest to 110. I don't know if you can see that. I, I'm a lousy camera person. i got to pay more attention. Let me just do it this way. This side will plug into here. Okay. The other regular, regular AC plug will plug into the nearest AC, and that will be here for that one. Then you can set the temperature on this little analog thermostat. It doesn't get hot, it just takes it just warms it up, takes the chill off of it. So you get two of those, one for each mattress. Okay. <laughs> I don't know where I am at this point time-wise, so I gotta pick it up. So the thing to know here is this this has a a water miser, a shower miser. So what it is is a circulator, a water circulator, and it circulates water between here and or through the water hot water tank and with the water pump so it goes in a giant loop right the idea is you don't waste water while heating it up so this is normal operation so if you want to use the, the water miser you'll put it in that position then you turn on your water heater and as the water's heating up it just circulates it in a loop like I said from the water tank through the water pump to here and back around so you know you don't waste any water normally if you're at home and you're you're, you're heating up your water for example it just the cold water just goes down the drain while it's warming up this this case it doesn't do that so if you're in drought areas you're not wasting water while you're heating it up and also you don't waste storage in your gray tank because you're not just dumping clean water in there just because it's not the right temperature so you do this and it'll go around and around and around and then this will turn a beige's color here this plastic will turn a beige's color that's when you know it's hot and then you would just go right like that and it works like a regular shower so it's a water circulator um, and it circulates it in a loop while it heats up that way you don't waste the water and you don't waste the storage okay now I want to say that all everything I tell you about here you can go to their websites and they have good good um, product videos plus the packet 
which is on the table, I believe. Yes, the packet over there also has literature on it also. All right. Just so you know, this is a GFCI. Every plug in the trailer is wired through this GFCI. Keep that in mind. And the last but not least, the, well not last either, the, the toilet has to have chemical and water in it. Now that's the black tank directly below. That's, that's coming out of there, it's a little bit of antifreeze that has residual pressure. So when you hook up your power and your water at the campsite, then you come in here, you dump a dose of chemical right into the bowl, then you step on the pedal, water will come swirling out. You just hold it long enough to put a gallon or so of water in there. Some people use more, it's up to you. But you have to have water and chemical in that black tank before you start using it. Otherwise the smell will be terrible and it can get clogged up. So you always do that. If you're going to, let's say you, you had to dump your black tank, but you're going to stay for another week at the campground. After you dump the black tank, you repeat that procedure. You put a dose of chemical, a gallon of water, and you're all set until you dump it next time. Okay? And this would be last here. This is the, this is a, a five or four speed, four speed fan. Um, it's it's again it's self-evident. This way you have to manually crank the roof up, or the, the I'm sorry the vent or the, the vent cover up. You don't have to crank up the roof. <laughs> All right. And there's another one here. These work really well. The first two speeds you can't even hear it running, and it really pulls the, the heat out. So on a, the days where you don't quite need air conditioning, you can just open your all your windows, you turn these on, and it'll pull the heat out. It works really well. And another important thing is when you're when it's the time of year that you're uh, you're starting to get condensation from your breath. Let's say you got a bunch of people over, um, these ten, trailers tend to get condensation. Uh, you put these on low, and it'll suck it right out. You'll never know it. Plus, because there's a tent on it, tents sometimes will want at the right temperature want to, will want to create condensation. You leave this running on low, and you won't have an issue with it. It's, it'll be bone dry. So these these flagstaffs are are uh, to me. I've been doing this for maybe 15 years or so. I've worked with Rockwoods, which are the same as flagstaffs, and I've worked with flagstaffs, obviously. And as trailers go, these are probably, in my opinion, the best trailers. And uh, when it comes to hybrids, with you know hybrids meaning the bunks fold down, these are the best ones. Period. So I'm not I'm not a salesperson. I'm just telling you the truth as I see it. So. Okay? All right, so I think that covers everything. We'll be able to ask us more questions when you come to pick it up. And we'll show you through it. And like I said, go to the manufacturer's videos for the bunks and the rest of it. And we'll also teach you that when you come here, okay? All right, so thank you very much for purchasing your trailer at National RV Detroit. Please remember what I said about inspecting the roof and the seals every 90 days. People generally don't inspect their seals enough. That's important to do. Uh, you're just protecting your investment. And that's not this trailer, it's every trailer ever made. And also remember that this is winterized right now. The water heater's empty and is bypassed and there's antifreeze in the system. Okay, thank you.